This is Ninja Mode, a solution I came up with for people who are feeling burnt out on Doom Eternal. The premise is simple. By this point, many people have gotten so good at the game that it's difficult to enter that flow state since it's so hard to find something challenging enough. Some talented modders have tried to solve this by creating incredibly tough master levels, but a lot of the time, they have to rely on spamming bullet spongy possessed super heavies or just putting too many enemies in in an attempt to overwhelm the player. Sometimes they come up with really unique encounters, such as Prode's clever use of totems in his horde modes, or Zandi's cursed prowler marauder moment from his leaky necroval part 2. But unfortunately, these are rare moments, and I figured we need to find a way to make each encounter intense again. To keep players on the edge of death without resorting to possessed archviles. Introducing Ninja Mode. Ninja Mode is very simple. Three times enemy damage, no HUD, no super weapons, no power-ups besides mega health, and the level must be completed deathless on nightmare difficulty. With Ninja Mode, individual tyrants and archviles are actually a threat again. Even fodder needs to be taken more seriously, so high DPS won't save you. Ninja Mode is all about movement and making every single encounter feel like an epic accomplishment. The chain gun shield is also trivialized, so it's no longer a get out of jail free card for people who over rely on it such as myself, but rather just some protective padding for blood punching. Additionally, the lack of a HUD forces you to rely on your internal predictions of your health and resources. This will result in your internal models improving, and will also increase your engagement by allowing you to keep your eyes on the combat at all times. Of course, with Ninja Mode, the bullshit deaths get amplified, so this is not for everyone. Nor is every level in the campaign expected to be beatable in Ninja Mode. This footage is of my successful run of the Cultist Base id Master level in Ninja Mode, and it took me a week and a half of practice. I don't think any level harder than this one should be played in ninja mode. Even this level, which is notoriously easy, got me pretty salty in my failed attempts, but damn did it feel good when I finally beat it. If any modders are up for it, I think it could be really fun to create mods balanced around ninja mode, where each encounter can be more focused and intentional to a specific vision without the need of adding more and more enemies to make it hard enough. For now though, the base campaign levels are still tough enough to provide a few more months of replayability. Now I'm going to pass this challenge off to Alston, and challenge him to do Doom Hunter base in ninja mode. Alston's the one who made me aware that you can modify enemy damage in the console. If you're not already subscribed, check out his channel linked in the description. Alright, enjoy the rest of my run, and try to count how many times I dodged death by the skin of my teeth. I figured I'll also do some commentary over my gameplay and kind of let you know about some insights of what was happening while I was doing these uh, encounters. An imp can really damage you on this mode. So Silar's lock-on tech is probably one of the most useful things in this mode. For most of tech, most quick swapping, it can be a bit risky because it requires a little bit of staying still on controller, but Silar's lock-on tech is still very reliable and doesn't require you to stay still for too much. But as you see here, I definitely lean a lot on the tried and true SSG Ballista. Also Ballista boosting is incredibly important in this mode. Especially when Prowlers are around, Prowlers are actually the most threatening enemy in this mode. Ooh, 
I almost died there. And here is an example where that prowler could have killed me very easily. <laughs> you see that baloney prowler teleport? That could have killed me. So I actually had a lot more trouble with this Marauder than I usually do. It tends to happen that the runs that are successful are usually the ones where you happen to be playing the worst in a lot of ways. What it comes down to is a lot of the time you're just playing safer and it's not as cool, not as fast, not as flashy, but that's why you survived. Also, PB stickies is a bit harder to pull off because you don't want to stay still. I like doing PB stickies, they're a lot of fun, but they are pretty risky. You really have to stay on the ground for them. And that's just something that you really can't afford on this mode. Of course, this is just for controller. Mancubi are probably the second most threatening after Prowlers. A single head-on collision of their turrets will kill you. The microwave beam is actually your best friend. Keeping enemies unable to damage you is a huge bonus in this mode. That little fodder hitting me took probably half my health. That was baloney. This section was another one that was a big challenge. The pain elementals can very quickly delete you when you're stuck in a close area with them. Here, I'm just practicing some PB sticky because I'm not actually getting to use it in combat. This section was also one of my big bottlenecks to beating this. In the next wave, things get pretty intense with the Manx. Again, Manx are probably the second most threatening enemy. 
and here we go. There's a lot of relying on the rockets to just get rid of things. And here I definitely needed to stay in the air a lot. If I did not stay in the air, that would be it. I learned that the hard way. And surprisingly, this wave is actually one of the easier ones. The carcasses are a bit of a threat, but this wave is actually probably much easier than the second wave was. Here's just a couple incidental encounters and the Revenant fight. I would show it, but kind of feel like it's not really that exciting. Now we get to another one. This room is actually not too hard, except that the <laughs> stress of actually getting to this room is what made it hard. Once you realize, oh wow, I'm already here, then things started to get a little bit intense for me. And I stopped playing super well, because I was just nervous. This room heavily, heavily relies on ballista boosting to get that extra speed boost. And meat hook. And there I thought I was about to die. Mancubus right there. That was a bad situation. And let's just delete him with a lock on. And as you can see, the shield is really not a get-out-of-jail-free card, but it is a good safety net. Hell Knights are not really an issue in this mode. This area is pretty fun. Usually I dealt with it with the PB stickies during my practice, but I just did not want to risk it. I don't think I even needed it, I think it was at full health. And here, things did not go at all like I practiced it, so I'm basically panicking the entire time. I did not meant to have the Arbalist out at this point, my Blood Punch didn't work. Things were pretty chaotic here, and everything was pretty impromptu. You can tell I'm panicking by me spamming sticky bombs, and there I almost died from the Cybermank. You might notice how intensely I'm focusing the Prowlers. Prowlers are incredibly threatening and probably led to most of my deaths because they will teleport behind you and it is game over. was incredibly risky and I probably deserve to die there.
this section as well almost killed me and I usually did much better during practice but at this point I had never gotten this far before in my actual attempts and I was really nervous and ready to do whatever it takes to brute force my way through it see how that mecha zombie just insta deleted my shield and at this point I'm actually feeling pretty good because this arena never really gave me too much trouble it's kinda interesting the final arena is not really very hard it's much easier than the ones that come before it but something that did benefit me is I believe there is some randomness in the spawns I believe that it can be random between arachnatrons and mancubi and the ar arachnatrons are definitely less threatening than the mancubi so I was very lucky here that the RNG gave me some arachnatrons to deal with and doesn't look like any mancubi now that prowler has to go Ah, there's that microwave beam lock. It is a great finisher. You know, I didn't even think of using the microwave beam these ways until Mayo said something in one of his videos, and I have to say, I do agree. I am a fan. Hell Knights as well, I like to use PB Sticky, but at this point I just do not want to risk it. Even with the Arch file, I'm just sticking to the good old freeze and lock on. And that's it. Felt pretty good. Alright. Oh, hope you've enjoyed. Meow.